everyone, this is Mike89. Welcome to the sixth video in my Sonic 3 and Knuckles with Knuckles tutorial series. This video is going to cover launch base. Let's get started. So hold right straight out of the start and uh, so much the same as with the other characters, you want to trigger this alarm and jump immediately as you trigger it. Now with Knuckles, because his jump's a little bit smaller, if you just hold right from here, you won't actually clear the lip of this corner. You'll end up Get, uh, hitting the side of it instead and that will slow you down and it will mess up the pattern of the flybot so what you want to do when you jump is actually you would have seen there that I was actually tapping back to the left a fraction so right and then a little bit of left just to slow yourself down and then right just to clear the, that lip so naturally that means that you've lost you know fraction of a second compared to Sonic or Tails so where with them I would move straight onto this elevator at exactly 8 seconds I'd delay that by about a fifth of a second so you can see I move on just after 8 and then slowly move across and then from about the bottom of the from about the bottom of the tube again jump down to the bottom and then climb up and then see the position that I, I tend to use Knuckles heel when I'm facing right it should line up with about you see how there's these little squares in the these checkerboard pattern in the in the floor there should be around about in line with that first line in the ground and what that should do is the flybot will hit you from the right hand side knock you to the left and into the pit then immediately hold right and you're level wrapped to the end of the stage. Uh, the one thing you have to do now is make sure that you hold down. You would have seen the screen scroll down there a bit. Uh, I like to face left before holding down as well, uh, just to make sure that I'm facing left for the next spin dash. Now, this bit's important. Okay, so over here, you can see there's a checkpoint there. Uh, there's also a few rings just above there. Um, if, however, you hit the uh, computer to open up this area the platform that was there then moves over to here so, you lo so you're locked out of the rings now I'm going to show you how to do the fight with no rings but if you're not feeling confident enough to actually do that and this is quite a difficult fight um, obviously don't jump straight away as soon as you appear um, underneath the, the TV there you just want to spin that straight over to the left and jump and somewhere over here uh, you should collect three or four rings and then go back hit the TV and drop down into the boss area so make sure you line up well in the in the starting position that uh, you can see again using knuckles heel it's pretty much immediately between the first two of these windows in the in the floor so you want to stand about there and what that means is when these when they come down straight away uh, that that first arm will just miss you from around, uh, as it swings around that way and then so the first jump is straight up and the second one you obviously have to wait till this arm has moved out of the way and jump and quickly move away again third and fourth ones are pretty easy because the um, the arms have stopped now these are the two most difficult hits in the fight so again we're gonna try and move we're moving out of the way of this arm here as it arcs around that way and then we're gonna jump back as soon as the arm moves away jump back towards it and get that hit now as you come down from this hit glide out to the left and slide along the floor for just a fraction or do what I did there which is spin dash um, either way you're basically trying to get out of the way of this arm this one here and jump into it and uh, that arm once you get this hit will now disappear so it won't hit you on the rebound so now you want to move more over towards the right so that this um, 
this one of the bosses uh, doesn't disappear too far into the wall. Uh, as you can see, I've had to move right and then left just to kind of juke it out of the wall a little bit. Uh, it gets much easier once you're one-armed. You see there I did a glide just to um, make sure the arm didn't get me. But don't, um, don't feel bad if you can't do that at first. That is a very difficult fight to do with no rings. So when first learning, I definitely recommend getting the rings to start with and make sure you try and have one at all times. Uh, so <laughs> I slightly missed that. Um, what you're meant to do is obviously not um, get stopped by the camera there. For, if you'd leave it a little bit longer, you can actually jump straight up to this platform and then you don't have to worry about the spin dash. Uh, so that uh, that booster there, you actually want to make sure that you don't have a lot of speed uh, when you're hitting it. If you go through one of those while you have got a lot of speed, uh, it doesn't actually activate at all. So that's why I had a spin dash and jump to drop off some speed. Uh, and then, once you get up to that ramp there, any any point when it's quite steep, jump up to it, hold right, and glide out to this platform here. As soon as you touch it, you'll um, you'll start running, and then jump over, spin dash, jump over that guy, uh, jump over this, and glide all the way to the other side, because those things are slow. Uh, now this jump is a little tricky to time. Actually, I'll go back just a fraction. So, you see, you see the floor dips twice. Uh, don't worry about the first one. Don't worry about that. Uh, just as it starts to dip the second time, is when you want to jump, and that'll uh, get you over this platform. There's actually a spring there if you miss it, but uh, you obviously don't want to use that if you don't have to, so you can carry momentum this way. Uh, and then there's a couple of different things you can do here. What I did, I, I think by mistake, was grab onto the wall and then jump to get momentum back that way. Uh, you can also slow down a little bit as you're coming through here so that um, you break through you break through that tube and then it actually sends you down before um, before you get go past it. Anyway, make sure you're facing right if you can so you can come out of there and spin dash immediately. Uh, again, make sure that you're traveling a bit slowly there. Uh, as soon as Knuckles appears underneath this platform, uh, it's safe to jump off it and you'll jump down inst uh, instead of up back above the platform again. Uh, and then what you want to do is as soon as you get under this corner, uh, you want to glide out this way. And what that'll do is it'll land you here and what the game wants you to do is go around for a few seconds and get back to here but you can skip all of that just by gliding at the right time landing straight there and you'll carry on in a run there's actually a hidden booster just here as well uh, so you need to now make sure the next thing you do is jump over that so I think I'm about to do a spin dash and jump over it uh, but yeah make sure you avoid that because it will send you down here and then you'll have to go up and climb around uh, what you want to do as you're falling down here uh, start by not holding anything for the first few till you get to about this far down and then you start holding right because if you hold right all the way down you'll actually hit this corner and stop so by delaying it a little bit and missing that corner you actually land further up the slope and because you dropped from a glide you can spin dash immediately regardless of the fact that the slope is quite steep so spin dash away uh, now this is one of my favorite tricks in the whole game here so uh, make sure that you're running all the way up to this slope now this slope can uh, is one of the ones that can stop you dead sometimes so you don't want to see that uh, and it seems to happen less often when you're running 
but as soon as you get to it being vertical here you want to start rolling because then you'll maintain more speed uh, and then as soon as you get to vertical on the other side you want to jump off and that's going to land you in the corner down here send you through this tube and on this ramp uh, again you want to wait until it's nearly horizontal but not quite you don't need a lot of extra height because of how much speed you have to make this jump work and if you time it just right you'll go past everything there and glide just as you get to this platform here and then you stop perfectly in position you can jump and glide up there and carry on make sure you roll so that you take out that TV uh, now if you do this next bit quickly this bit is meant to be underwater but if you do all of that before the water reaches the top of the screen uh, you can do it while it's while it's still filling up which saves quite a bit of time because so obviously you'd be traveling a lot slower if the water was there uh, so here as soon as you go through this glide to stop yourself and glide back into the tube uh, now here this this one's a little bit finicky so what I do is I I actually jump and glide onto it so that I definitely have no speed and it sends me up like that uh, jump as it goes horizontal here and you'll land on that spring uh, make sure with this glide that you actually clear the um, the fire breathing head there uh, if you stop on that then you'll continue running but if you stop here then you'll stop immediately and be able to spin Nash which is what we want uh, okay boss time now uh, with this this boss is slightly different to what it is with Sonic and Tails and it's to do with where the spike ball is so you can see I'm I haven't even got my first hit and immediately there's the spike ball so what so what we're gonna do is instead of spin dashing in place like you would with um, with tails in particular uh, we're gonna now jump on the boss's head hold hold jump on this make sure that you don't let it go and then uh, off the rebound move over to the other side um, so that you dodge the spike ball and then bounce on it. two, three, four, five, six. Now, sometimes you can get a seventh hit there, but if you do, you'll definitely get hit at the same time. Uh, it's actually quite important that you've got a couple of rings later on, so I don't recommend taking this hit and going for this extra. So after six, I move away, and then wait. It can come. It can come down from either side, so it can be here or here. Um, this is also why I want to make sure that I've got lots of rings so that rings will fly out in both directions. So now I want to take a hit immediately. Uh, now unlike with Sonic's boss, uh, when you when you get the last hit on this boss, the, the boss actually retreats upwards. So you want to get this last hit as soon as possible. Unlike with Sonic where it retreats downwards, so you want to leave it as long as you can. So next hit and then make sure you go over here get as many rings as you can four is plenty even even two actually uh, as long as you can get as long as there's a ring that retreats in each direction when you get hit because uh, you're going to need to be able to take a couple of hits in this next phase uh, the, the swooping phase there's nothing you can really do to get extra hits so just make sure that you get one on each pass and that's four when he spawns at the top Okay, now stand over on the left hand side and charge a spin dash. Now he's going to swoop. Uh, there's no actual consistency as to when he'll drop, but I can tell you he's going to swoop across once, then back to the right a second time, and then the earliest he can drop out is on the third swoop, the one back to the left. He gives you quite a bit of warning as to when he's going to drop. So even if he's uh, facing right, you have enough time to release this spin dash, stop, glide over here, and then spin dash back to the left. 
So, I think that's what actually happens here. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So he's facing right. As soon as he stops, and he's facing right, you want to stop yourself over here facing left so you can set up a spin dash. If he's facing left, then you don't have to do this, and you can just um, stay charging where you are. But, point is, that when... Uh, when the boss uh, first intersects the ground, you want to be hitting him with a spin dash. And then, that'll knock you back to the side of the screen, again facing towards the middle. And then you charge another spin dash and you go again. So you, here I got, got an extra hit there. Now, here comes the fun bit. We're now going to spin dash into him again and take a hit. Uh, now, while you're in hit invincibility, you can do something very interesting. Uh, because when you jump out of a roll in this game, you actually get pushed slightly into the ground. Uh, what I'm going to do is spin dash to put myself in a roll, and then jump as I go through the boss itself. And that pushes me far enough down into the ground to intersect with the hitbox and lets me get an extra hit, like that. And then just do the same again, and that's the end of the fight. Uh, now I'm pretty sure I hit this capsule the earliest I can, which is that dip there. And then you want to set yourself just to the left of this object in the floor here because that's where the game will move you to anyway. Anyway, so that's launch base done. Uh, I'm gonna play that back now with no interruptions.